So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video, and before we get started, a couple of announcements. Apple did release their public developer beta program today, so if you guys do want to try it out, it's totally free to use. I'll link down below exactly what website you need to go to in order to try it out. The only caveat is, is that you have to be willing to have a beta software on one of your devices. If you have a secondary device, then by all means, give it a try. But if you have a main device, even though this beta has been pretty stable so far for me on the beta 2, it's still hard to fully recommend it for everybody, especially if it's like your work machine, your revenue generating machine, anything could happen with a beta software. So, you know, if it's your secondary device, go for it. If it's your main device, just tread carefully is my, my own opinion and my own recommendation. And then another surprise was that Apple released, I guess, a V2 of the developer beta program for beta 2. We do have a new build number, so it is a different software, but there weren't any real changes made in terms of any new features or functionality or any new bug fixes, there was nothing. I do believe that it has to do with the fact that the regular beta program came out, so I think they're just putting it out to all devices now. But I could be wrong, definitely leave a comment below if you guys know anything different about the V2. But today, we're gonna be talking about iPadOS 15 Beta 2 and how it's been running over the last week, because I've been using it ever since last week and it's been wonderful. And again, on a Beta 2, it's very, very impressive how stable it is. But enough of this rambling, let's get out of this view, go to the other view and talk about some of the other features that I found within Beta 2 that will be useful and pretty beneficial to you guys. And then also talk about some battery performance and just performance overall. But let's get into it. So before we actually get started, I did want to show you that since we got a version 2 of beta 2, I did want to show you guys the build number. So if we go into general, go into about, click on the 15.0 right there. If I pull this up, you can see that we're on 19A5281J. And I do believe that the last one we were on was H. So it looks like we're going backwards, which is unlike Apple. I don't really know exactly what that means, but I do think it has something to do with the fact that the public beta was released today. And I think it has something to do with that. But again, there's zero difference between the beta two from last week and the beta two from this week. So I did want to let you guys know that because again, if I go into the photos, it was 5.23 gigabytes in order to install this guy. So keep that in mind if you guys are developers and thinking about updating to beta two. So one huge thing that came out in the news was if if we go into this Mac Rumors website, so before iPadOS 15 Beta 2, developers were limited to five gigabytes of RAM usage for that application, which sort of made sense because the first iPad Pros only had four gigs of RAM, and then you could get six, gig, six gigs of RAM if you got like the one terabyte version from before. But now that doesn't really make sense because now with these M1 iPad Pros, we started eight gigabytes of RAM and then we can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I think this is a great decision by Apple to allow developers to pretty much showcase the power of what this iPad Pro can do with some more RAM intensive applications and tasks through these pro applications. Maybe one day we'll get pro applications. And now I kind of want to go over some of the new things that I found within iPadOS Beta 2 that I didn't find out before. So if we go into Safari, one cool thing is with this new three dot menu, you can kind of scroll down and press add to quick note. So you can see that now it gets a bookmark or a link is put into my quick notes. And if I want to get out of here and open up that quick note again, I can just press on here and it takes me to that exact website, that exact URL. So I think this is going to be very useful for quick at a glance information, or if you're doing research, just throw the bookmark right into your notes and then think about it later. So this is going to be great for productivity gains, for efficiency gains. Overall, I definitely love this new addition. Another one that I noticed was actually within maps. So if you go to maps, you can see that we're trying to go to the Apple store, right? So we'll click on the Apple store. We're a two minute drive away, but now watch what happens as the route gets populated, right? So I'm gonna press the two minutes. You can see that the route populates differently than it used to. Before they would just slap the route on the screen. And now it's kind of like this nice, pleasant kind of view of the actual route being populated, not in real time, but kind of like finding its way to the Apple store, right? So I kind of like that. Again, nothing really cool or productive about that. Just something, just a new feature that I thought was nice. And it's a very pleasant to look at is basically what I'm saying. Another big one that has to do with privacy and location settings. So if we go to settings, go to privacy, go to location services, and if we go into one of the applications, let's go to Spike for instance, right? We now have a new option inside of here that says, ask next time or when I share. So basically what this is prompting the app to do is every single time you go into the application, if you press on this option, then every time you open, it's gonna ask you, hey, do you mind if we track your location? instead of either deciding never or while using the app. So I like this new little feature. So basically every single time you're reminded like, hey, this app is trying to track you from location standpoint. Are you sure you want that to happen? If not, move on. Another huge one, which is gonna be awesome, at least on the iOS side, because I don't really use the clock or the alarm on my iPad too much. But now 
what we have here is first off, I think this is a new UI. I don't know if maybe I just don't use the alarm clock on the iPad Pro ever and that's why that's happening, but this to me looks like a new UI. But the new thing that happened here is before to actually edit the time on the alarms, you would have to press edit and then go into the actual thing. Now, you, all you have to do is tap on the alarm. So it's basically removing like three, four steps in order for you to change your alarm time, which I love. I'm all about reducing friction, making sure that the consumer can kind of get to what they want to as quickly as possible. So being able to just quickly do this is awesome. There's also a new splash screen when you open up the library section of the podcast application. I forgot to actually take a screenshot of it, but it's basically letting you know that the library has been totally reorganized. You can now follow people, unfollow people. And if you click on one of the shows and click on the three dots, this is new. So this unfollow show, you can always unfollow stuff before, but now it's new verbiage. It definitely didn't say show before. But from a feature standpoint, at least like a tangible feature standpoint, that's all that I really noticed. But what I do want to touch on is the actual battery life. So if we go into settings, let's hit the battery, let it load up. We'll go to the last 24 hours. You can see that, yes, I've been plugged in the entire time, all day, but I'm getting about four hours and 48 minutes of screen on time, about an hour and 40 minutes of screen off time. And if we go into the last 10 days, you can now see that we're doing about five hours and 12 minutes and then an hour of screen off time. And again, the real way to hone in on your battery life is to click on a day that uses a lot of battery. So you can see that we have six hours and 49 minutes of screen on time. Most of that battery was taken by NBA 2K and YouTube. So very leisure heavy day, I guess, on that day. And here's where you can see what applications are sucking up the most amount of juice. So if I go on a day like Thursday, you can see that 41 minutes of LumaFusion took up 11% versus YouTube, five hours and seven minutes only took up 18%. So those are the kind of things that you gotta play with to kind of do your best to try to get that 10 hour battery life because I still have not hit anywhere near that. The closest I've gotten is I think eight hours of screen on time. So keep that in mind. I know Apple said anywhere from 10 to 11 hours of screen on time, but if you're doing anything intensive, especially with this mini LED display, your battery life is gonna get sucked up. But those are pretty much all the differences with iPadOS Beta 2 V2, I guess you could call it, but let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, I did notice some new features like the alarm clock one. I thought that was awesome. It's something that I cannot believe it took Apple like 15 years to get done. But there's a couple other features that Apple just slowly starts to add in there, starts to adjust, starts to fix all those bugs. And then also add new features that aren't really anything for an efficiency purpose, but more just for a nice visual, like the maps one where it automatically starts to show you the route of where you're going, but instead of just plastering the route right on the screen. So nice little touches like that to just make the experience a little bit more uh, digestible, I guess is the word to say, or just a little easier, more fun to use. And that's what the iPad is. iPad OS to me, even though Mac OS is probably better overall and a better recommendation, iPad OS and working off the iPad Pro is just so much more fun that I get so much more work done. So like I said, overall, the beta 2 is very stable. And if you guys do want to get into the beta program, like I said, the link will be down in the description below if you guys want to try it out. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike for always keeping us hooked up. They're always the first link in the description below. If you guys got a new iPad or have old screen protectors or anything like that, highly, highly recommend making sure that your screen is totally protected because that is the number one resell value when it comes to reselling your actual iPad Pro later on if you want to get a new one. But like I said, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment below if you guys have noticed anything new or if you guys are actually going to sign up for the public developer program because very curious to figure out what you're going to do. And if you do sign up for it, are you putting it on your main device or your secondary device if you have one? But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time.